Hello everyone. In today's special science class, we are going to discuss about the light and dark adaptation. So we are discussing our special senses. Among that, in that vision, we are discussing. In the last session, we discussed about the photochemistry of vision. We saw how the rods and cones have their photo pigments getting activated and how it is getting perceived. Today, we will be discussing about a concept which is close to the rods and cones and their different property. That is the dark and light adaptation. How the cones and rods are getting adapted to the dark environment and the lighter environment. So coming to the dark adaptation. So what do you mean by dark adaptation? So first of all, dark adaptation means whenever you are entering into a dark room, our eye is getting adapted to it. Our eye is getting accustomed to the environment. That property is called as the dark adaptation. So what happens in dark adaptation is there is something called as visual threshold. The threshold for vision, it drops and the retinal sensitivity increases. All of us would have experienced this. So suppose whenever you are entering into a theater room, initially we will not be able to spot the chairs. After some time, when we are looking around and searching for it, we will be able to spot the objects around us. This is nothing but the dark adaptation. Whenever you are entering a dark environment, for some time, you are not able to visualize anything. But after some time, we are able to see the objects around us. How is this happening? It is happening because the visual threshold, like the threshold impulse for a visual signal, that is coming down. If the threshold is lower, then automatically the uh, visual images can be found. Then the retinal sensitivity increases. So these are the two things that is happening in dark adaptation. In the previous session, we saw that Rhodopsin, whenever it is in the light stimulus, what is going to happen? It is going to get bleached into scotopsin and altrans retinal. In a darker environment, this bleaching process is not going to happen. So what is the ultimate result? So more and more scotopsin will be available and more and more Levensis retinal is available. So they will combine to form more and more rhodopsin. So first of all, the rhodopsin amount rhodopsin amount is going to get increased and because of the huge quantity of the photopigment even a slight light also the person will be able to see and that is why we are able to spot some things in the dark so this rhodopsin is getting increased because now it is getting time to form the new elements and the levels can increase to huge amounts and it can increase the sensitivity of the eye to huge amounts so let's see the diagram here this is the dark adaptation curve so whenever a person is entering on the x-axis we have minutes in the dark for how long he is staying in the dark and in the y-axis see the retinal sensitivity so as and when we enter so that time is zero time and after that the person is staying in the dark environment for a longer time so what is going to happen in this graph we can see that immediately the sensitivity of the retina is increasing. The first part, this part is increasing very, very rapidly. Within 10 minutes, it has increased to such huge levels. Here it is written that it is cone adaptation. All of us know that for dark vision, rods are important, but cones will start to adapt faster. So let's write the property of the cones. They will adapt faster. They will adapt four times faster than the rods but it has a limitation. What is the limitation is the sensitivity level, level that is increased by the cones that is even less than 100 times from the baseline. So it is not giving us a huge impact. Whereas the rods, they will start to adapt slowly, but it can increase the sensitivity of the retina to very, very, very high levels. As you can see here in just 20 minutes of darkness, the cone adaptation can take it to up to the level of 6000 times. From the baseline, it has increased the level to 6000 times. And that is the beauty about rods. Even though it adapts slowly, but its sensitivity is very, very high in comparison to that of the baseline. They say that the sensitivity of the rod can go up to a million levels. So it can increase its sensitivity to such huge levels. And within the 30 minutes of darkness, the person will be able to adapt to the maximum limits that is with the help of a cones. So this is the property of the dark adaptation. So what is happening is more and more rhodopsin is formed, which in turn is increasing the sensitivity of the rods. Even though the cones contribute, but they will contribute very, very minimally. Initially, it will help, but 
on a due course the rods are the ones which are going to play greater role so this is all about dark adaptation then what is light adaptation the reverse of it so we can also say that abolishing dark adaptation abolishing dark adaptation is called as light adaptation so what happens whenever the person enters from a dark room to a light area so what is going to happen now the photopigments are going to get bleached so the levels of rhodopsin is going to come down so if the levels of rhodopsin is going to come down what will happen to the threshold the threshold is going to increase if the threshold is increasing what will happen to the sensitivity the retinal sensitivity is going to come down so exactly whatever is happening in the dark adaptation that will get abolished in the light adaptation here in the light adaptation the cone has a better property to provide the color vision so that is why the cones work at maximally at a bright light and rods work at maximally at a darker environment it is said that the sunlight is around 10 billion times more brighter than the stars but still we have adaptation to light also we are able to see things in the morning and even in the starlight with the help of rods we are able to spot the things so that is the beauty of this light and dark adaptation so this light adaptation what will happen is initially it will become very very flashy why because is when you enter the light immediately at that time the person will not be able to decrease the sensitivity of the retina so that is why it takes a little bit of time to decrease the sensitivity of the retina and when he is around there for a longer time it is going to naturally adapt to a light environment but initial sensitivity is will not be decreased immediately that is why we feel glare in the eyes so that is the reason for light adaptation and the property of the light so coming to some of the values of dark and light adaptation light adaptation happens very fast its duration is it adaptation will happens within 5 minutes of time whereas dark adaptation it also starts within 5 minutes and it reaches approximately the maximum level in 20 minutes sometimes it takes 30 minutes for the complete adaptability so our eyes has an ability to change the sensitivity of the eye from zero level up to a million levels so it has a huge property to adjust to the sensitivity of the lights now there are some other mechanisms which help in the dark and light adaptation process first thing is what will happen to the pupillary size when you enter a dark environment so whenever we are in a dark environment the eye will try to let in more light it's just like a camera suppose if you want to let in more light inside a camera you have to widen the diaphragm in a similar way the pupil will widen and it will try to allow more light so what will happen pupillary dilation will happen these are additional mechanisms and not only this not only at the levels of the ret retina that is the rods and cones the adaptation is going to happen even at the neural levels even at the higher level of the brain it can get adapted to a dark and a lighter environment suppose if you put a person into a light environment the level of response shown at the level of the cones as well as at the higher level it is going to diminish basically the sensitivity of the response is going to diminish at a higher level also so th these are the neural mechanisms and these are the about the dark and light adaptation i hope it's clear thank you for watching the video but i would suggest with a question you can drop the answers in the comment section so sometimes the pilots or the astronauts or even the radiologist in our field they are advised to wear red goggles so it has to do something with the light and dark adaptation if you know the answer you can drop it in the comment section i will put the answer uh, in a pinned comment you can go through and verify Thank you for watching. We'll stay tuned for the next video. Thank you so much.